Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode and today is another live Q&A, it's today Saturday, very excited about today, today it's the last day of our live uh, retail online arbitrage crash course, this is the live Q&A, I hope you guys are having an awesome and wonderful week, I hope you guys had a great sales, I hope you guys really capitalized on all the stuff that we had, Black Friday, Cyber Monday and also all this growth that's coming up with um with just the season uh which is the holiday season which is december which is the best uh hours we having amazing 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 uh amazing sales amazing growth and i would like to show you that so why well, start with you guys if you saw it we had nothing and now we are at eighty nine thousand and point three four. um and actually just let me just do it here for you guys to see Okay, if you see that, it's, I hope you guys see it very well or not, 89,000. It's actually reached 90,000 yesterday, but it's going to be dips slowly up and down, which is normal. Um, and this is something you need to be able to sustain. To be able to sustain it, you need to have a lot of inventory, uh, and it's really hard to, to, to do it. So I really wanted to come here. I know we didn't uh, post it. I know we didn't post the link, and not a lot of you are gonna, going to be here, but I just wanted to come on, on here. Uh, explain to you a few things if you really want to maintain the same kind of prices or the same kind of sales every time you need to make sure that you have the inventory to support it so if you realize why the fluctuation happens just give me a second why the fluctuation happens here you see every time there's a dip here this dip then this dips here why because inventory by the time it hits amazon it takes time so every time I have units, I sell very well. And then when it comes down, when I don't have enough inventory, or it goes below the limit that I'm comfortable with. What happened is that goes down. And then when the units get checked in and everything goes well, then I start getting the sales again. So this is going to get a dip again because um, I have been sending inventory, but they're being checked. They're taking a little bit of time. And also, I don't think I'm going to go as hard as uh, what I'm doing right now uh, because I have my own uh, business, I have my private label, which is that's my main focus. And I want to do this one for you guys to go ahead and watch and see if you can do something and make a little bit of money. If you see, I start with you in the Facebook group. I showed you my hauls. I showed you uh, my hustle every day and until we made it this way. So it is possible if you put the work, if you put your heads into it and stop playing around and believing that, hey, it's not possible. It is possible, but you need to put the work. I put the work. I put the money. I had the knowledge, which is something that you would be missing or maybe even the capital a bit, but you can start at a lower scale. You don't need to go with a higher scale. Hey, right away, boom, boom, uh, spend 50, 30, 40, 50, 100 thousand dollars right away. Start with a small increment. You can start with any budget that you need. 500 bucks, a thousand bucks, whatever you can. More you have, the more growth you're going to have. The more money you're going to spend, the more sales revenue you're going to get. And it has to be different business models that you have to be in your head. Are you going to be the guy who's doing a lot of sales and you, you depend on sales volume or you, and with lower profit, or you want to have a higher, and, um, a higher profit with lower inventory, but you sell slower and you'll be able to double your, mo your money faster. The way I took it this year, I was going with boom, boom, hard, 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 a sales volume and getting a lower profit on each item, but I'd be able to flip my money faster and faster and faster. So if you realize my my average profit per unit is $15. So that means every sale I get, uh, the average at the end of the day, it's around 15 bucks. So every time I make a sale, I know an average like that. Why? Because I have some product that sells at 20, 30 bucks profit, and I have some at six, seven, eight bucks, which is normal because I just want, uh, I want to capitalize on the sales velocity and just volume. And also the other thing I have done is just basically, I have went very, deep not wide like i got a lot of excuse which is i have to have it if i really want to get this kind of sales so i went with a lot of inventory but i went deep in each one of them i was getting 10 20 30 units per per uh per skew or per asin but with lower profit and i was just able to flip them more and more and more uh now just doing this i was able to generate really really good money and i'm very very happy with the results uh, i think Last month we made around twenty three thousand dollars in profit, which is really awesome. Was around um, just let me check it very quickly here. Um, 
and I'll let you know exactly what we did. Uh, but I just want to show you it is possible and it is something that you need to make sure you capitalize on and something that you need to do if you really want to make money. Do not listen to other people. Do not just go ahead and say, hey, uh, it's not working. Amazon FBA. Amazon is not the right thing to do. No, you need to go out there and start doing something for yourself. Selling and buying has been there for a long, long, long time. So um, it's not something that's going to go away. It's just something that's going to get better, especially now with online, which is really, really awesome. So please, I this is the last live Q&A, uh, basically. And I just was um, to see if we can get any questions from you guys. But if we're not going to have any questions, we don't have anybody who's attending, which is, uh, I understand, with how busy you are, guys, with uh, before Christmas. And also, maybe this, this is not the type of content that you need, which is, I understand it. But I just wanted to give it for those who are really struggling, the people who are really, uh, they don't have the budget to go ahead and do private label, which is get on, they're going to spend uh, at least ten, fifteen thousand dollars to start private label. Private label is very intensive; it takes a lot of money for you to do it. So a lot of people they don't have that money, or they don't have they have the money, but they cannot risk that kind of amount of money because it's there's uncertainty in a private label. But retail and arbitrage is very simple, very easy, and you'll be able to make the money very quickly. So if I was saying last month uh, we made eighty-one thousand um, dollars, and you know what? Let me just show it to you. Um, and you will see my numbers. And uh, let's see. Uh, all right. Yeah, why not? Uh, all right. So, so I'm sharing with you guys now the numbers itself. This is real behind my own account. You see, last month we made eighty-one thousand dollars, and we actually net profit at twenty-two thousand two hundred ninety-five. This month forecast, they say around 298, but that's not true. It's going to be way less. It's going to be maybe 50, 60, 70 because of the amount of inventory that I have. So far, I made 3,975, almost 4,000. Yesterday, I made 5,670 in sales, and I made a profit of 1,500, uh, 1,500, which is you know around 25 percent. It's not much, but as I told you, I'm in the in the volume business, so I just keep turning things, and that's what it's been. So. I really, really think uh, you should um, do that business, make the money. It's a lot of sweat equity you're going to have uh, because it requires a lot of physical. If I can do it at a 300 pound, I believe you can do it. If uh, I can imagine you're thinner than me and you'll be able to uh, do it very easily. So now, would that continue? What's gonna, going to happen? Would that continue? Uh, I believe... This kind of growth, I cannot maintain it myself uh, because I have my own private label and I have a lot of things I need to work on and I cannot maintain this kind of uh, velocity or this kind of work every week because I have other things I need to take care of. So I'm going to slow down with my sourcing. I am going to change my strategy. I'm not going to go deep. I'm going to go very wide. So every time I'm going to go, I'm going to aim for two units per product, two to three units, unless it's really, really killer deal that I cannot uh, dispute or something is really, really crazy, 10 cents on a dollar or something like that. Yes, I might go deep, but most of the time I'm going to go two units at a time. And I think this is the best thing I'm going to do. Two to three units is enough. Uh, if I'm able to maintain the whole year until next Q4, if I'm able to maintain 30, 40,000 a month, I'm okay with it because that side hustle, one day it's gonna require me one, two days a week, maybe it tops, some little bit sourcing one day or two days, and after that, just uh, packing the stuff and good to go. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't think I'm going to be able to maintain that much. Even the money is re really good, uh, but this is what I'm thinking about. I don't think I'm going to go that deep. So now, for example, sourcing-wise, uh, what, what am I at as sourcing? Uh, sourcing, I sourced yesterday. I sourced a lot of good product. I'm going to ship them on Monday, but this is might be like my last big big shipment is going to go lower and lower. So you cannot stop sourcing at all because you need to keep your inventory high. If you have inventory higher, you'd be able to, to maintain your sales through rate, which is really important. The other thing, I am going to lower my um, uh, sourcing, but I am going to maintain my level of inventory over there and try to maintain thirty to $40,000 a month. I'm okay. Even if I do 20% of that, make six to 
$8,000 a month, why not? I'm happy with that. There's no problems. Now, can I hold inventory more? As I said, yes, I can hold it and I can make more money if I want with a lower, uh, with higher profit, but I'm thinking about just keeping the volume on. Uh, this other thing, you need to keep sourcing the whole month because don't forget there's Black Friday, there's January, there's still people who are going to, uh, after Christmas, they have, uh, sorry, there's um, uh, Boxing Day uh, after Christmas, which is, you're gonna sell a lot of things, liquidate the things that are not selling very well. So for example, I have a few SKUs that I went very deep in, but they're still not selling that well. I'm hoping they'll be able to sell within December 15th. If December 15th to the 20th, they sell is great. If it's not on Boxing Day or in Christmas Eve, whatever it is, I'm going to lower my uh, prices. I'm going to go in the negative even because I'm liquidating. So each one of them, maybe I'm gonna take a hit by $5. Who cares? Get the hit, sell out, get that cash, invest in something else. And as I told, it's going to be two units to three units at a time at most. But you keep, you need to keep sourcing. The other thing in Boxing Day and until the end of the year, until the beginning of next year, 2021, at beginning of January, is going to be a lot of liquidation. The same thing that we're doing, liquidating our units and our products because they're not selling. Walmart, Target, TJ Maxx are going to liquidate all a lot of toys. They're going to liquidate a lot of Christmas stuff. If you really want to keep and hold for next year, you can go ahead and do it. But for me, I don't like this kind of, hey, keep it, hold it for another year, and then sell it very well. I did that last year with Advent calendars. I had a lot of Advent calendars. They were like for five bucks. I bought them and I was able to sell them for $50, $54 this Christmas. But it takes time. I'm not going to hold. I mean, I don't recommend that for beginners. I think unless you you want to keep them and next year see what happens. But I don't think it's the right thing to do because you want to turn your money over and over and over and over. Uh, so it's really, 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 it's important for you to keep sourcing and to buy a lot of units for you next year, because it's very important. We have here, Danny says, good morning. Good morning to Danny. Ricardo also said, good morning, Sad. Good morning to you, Ricardo. Very happy to have you here. I would love to hear more about your business, man. How is it? How is it going? I hope you're killing it. I know you're in the same kind of business, so I hope you're really killing it. I imagine you have more impressive numbers than mine. Uh, because you know that's the thing that you do. So I really hope um, you're doing very well, my man, and well deserved because you work very hard. So keep buying inventory, as I said, for next year, um, and just keep buying slowly, slowly, slowly. Now it's going to be a slow season coming up, which is usually uh, the end of January or beginning of February until March, April is going to be a slow season. Uh, people are paying the debt. People are paying their Christmas gift that they bought, they put in Visa, MasterCard, loans, whatever it is, they're trying to pay it. And after after that, the tax tax season, which is February, I believe, you'll be able to get a little bit of, of kind of momentum, which is really, really awesome. Um, um, that's it. So this is the things that I'm going to be doing. And these are the things that I'm really focused on. I think we did phenomenal this year. I'm very happy with what we did. Uh, having impressive at a part-time uh, around 20 hours to 30 hours a week I was putting into that business and I was able to I was able to bring it to 90,000 which is I believe very impressive I don't know if you guys are just brand new here or just came in I just want to tell you that I was just discussing with them uh, discussing with people that we reach up to ninety thousand dollars a month in sales and I also showed you last month we made twenty two thousand out of 82,000, which is I shared. If you go ahead, go back and go ahead and check the video, you will see I shared even my seller board and showed you the need profit. I don't think anybody can come out there and show you the numbers as I'm showing you because I'm doing the business, I'm busy, uh, but I'm very happy with it, where I am. Um, I'm happy where I am today. We're working hard, we're making the money, and uh, you know it's gonna slow down, and you have to be prepared for that, and you have to make your money right now because most of people, which is I feel you guys, I feel you so much. People who have retail business, people who are they're in lockdown. This time of the year is the best time of the year for people to make the money, and usually they make that money, which this money, which is holding for another six, seven months because they make the most out of it. So being out of business is really hard. So for me. I'm grateful for what I have, but I think you need to adjust, pivot all the time and have your strategy of what you want to do and make the money any way that you can do it. Whether it's retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, pallets, wholesale, whether you're doing uh, whether you're doing um, a pal uh, private label, whatever it is, just do it 
and do it slowly. I think for most of you, because look, the success rate in private label maybe 5%, 5% of, of all sellers will be able to succeed, succeed 5 to 10%, maybe max 90% of you are going to fail in it, which is which is that's the stat. So if you want to get something easier, do retail on arbitrage is almost guaranteed. It requires work, it requires ungated. And also I did this crash course for you guys. I know there's a lot of information, but if you want more information, ask me, let me know what you need. I cannot, uh, I'm trying to give content to see, to gauge you guys what you really need. But if it's not, I cannot do much. You have to ask the questions, uh, at least from someone who really doing it and uh, someone who showing you the numbers, someone who really, worrying about you and someone who started just like you i started like you i even even below you <laughs> trust me below you <laughs> i was almost poverty uh so let's go ahead and see here what we have we have it's been three months on product research and I still couldn't find a product for private label i found one last month but that was too competitive and slip margin uh it's gonna require it's gonna require time and i think most of people who are looking for products for private label they're looking for um uh, that home run there's no such a thing as a home run i found a product that home run was selling now uh, every day we're selling our 45 units is a brand new product very 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 good uh in black friday we did 100 units uh per day and was really awesome but um i'm not profitable i'm not profitable i'm still in the in the red, I'm still not making the money. I'm still losing money. Only the past four days, I actually gained my ranking very well. And I'm getting ahead of people who have thousands of reviews. And I'm making 50 bucks out of 40 sales, which is not much. I can make 50 bucks with two products from retail arbitrage. But this is the nature of private label. And anybody who tells you otherwise, they're just lying to you. You need to have two or three months of losses or break even whatever it is until you start making it because you establish your ranking you establish your 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 uh pricing you need to establish your your um uh, position uh, and then you'll be able to make the money so that's going to happen like my first two shipment almost 2000 unit i sorry not 2000 a uh, thousand and three hundred units almost i lost money and break even and now a little bit i'm making money 40 units to make 50 bucks not very 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 cool but i understand it it's going to take two three months for me to do it so i'm capitalizing on that traffic that's coming in from q4 uh, from q4 and holidays and i'm just trying to sell a lower little bit of price and gain more to and i see my ranking really going up for all the main keyword which is really awesome this is for private label and also uh it's just it's just that's the kind of that's the nature of private label there's nothing you can do about it uh conchita how you doing i hope you're doing well maria I hope you're doing fine. I hope everything is well with you and your family. And uh, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate your support, guys. Please, guys, I really need your help. I need your help. And I'm calling out for all the fans of mine who really cares um, about the channel or cares uh, about me a bit. If you tell me what kind of content you would like to see, uh, I'm really thrown off. I don't know exactly what kind of content. I know a lot of I know a lot of I have a lot of knowledge, but I don't know what exactly to share with you. I'm not sure even what kind of video you guys want. You want to pre recorded? You want you like this live Q and A or not? I need your feedback, please, because it's really, really, really important for me to to know. So I know what I keep keep on. And please, uh, your likes, your comment helps me to see what I'm going to keep going. If it's not uh, this business, I'll show you how much I made from YouTube, and you'll be surprise how much money I made uh, so please if you give me your feedback I really appreciate it and I really 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 love uh, your feedback because it really means a lot because uh, to 2021 I cannot maintain this kind of uh, I can but if I don't see people are really interested I don't want to bother you and come out and just saying blah 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 I want to make sure I add value to you I make sure that I really give you the things that you really need uh, Ricardo says, not at all. I do this part-time, but the number are really good. I would like to know your model of pallets. Um, okay, the pallets, look, pallets, if I have, I mean, I, I do everything through a storage unit. So I'm, I don't have a warehouse. I wanted to I wanted to rent a warehouse last uh, few months ago. I want, I looked for some, some uh, warehouses, uh, 5,000 square feet, 8,000 square feet, because the best model that you really, really, really can do is actually 
with Palette, you need to have a space because you need to have a space. You need to get products in. Okay, uh, uh, let me talk about that. I think it's going to help you a lot. Uh, so what do you do with Palette? Palette is basically I buy uh, sh uh, sh ret uh, customer returns, shelf, uh, shelf poles. I buy uh, items that salvage, whatever it is. I get them for a very good deal. Deal. I get them shipped. I mean, I'm not doing it with throw a storage unit. I need truck loads. I need to make sure I get a lot of pallets, 10, 15 pallets to make the money. So what I what I was thinking of doing is basically getting the product to a warehouse, going through them, go through the good and the bad, testing the good, sell stuff on eBay, sell stuff on Amazon if they're brand new, they use on eBay. And also you need to make sure that you have an auction, local auction that sells or auction pallets. Because what happens if you get a lot of pallets, let's say, and let's say you are not into diapers and you get a big big pallet of diapers. Instead of you, if you cannot sell it on Amazon or anything like that, the best thing you can do is basically put it back in the auction and sell it to other, someone else who are really interested in that product. So you need to have multiple venue of sales channels to be able to grow the pallets really well. If you want to make 200, 300 bucks, yes, you can do it with, with your storage unit and you'd be good to go. But I'm talking about a scale. It's really, really different beast. So you need to make sure you have one, two sales channels, which is going to be Amazon and eBay. eBay for used, Amazon for brand new. You can use, use you can sell used on Amazon as well, but you need to be very careful. The second way, you can sell it to auctions. So local auctions who sells pallets, you can do that 100%. And the third thing you can do, which is, I think it's really amazing, you can have an open house in your warehouse and sell things every week. So for example, hey, today we have a $5, um, a $5 item. And you make a post in Facebook ads, you make, uh, you make a post in the Facebook, you make a Facebook ad, you go ahead and put in your local, uh, local, um, um, a, a Craigslist or uh, more Facebook Marketplace, whatever, make an ad. Hey, today we're having next week, we're having a five dollar uh, sale of uh, three day sales, five dollar, four dollar, three dollar days. So please come and buy. So, all this stuff is going to help you to sell by having multiple channels. And also, plus number four, if you are able to open up a little store to sell the used things, go ahead and do it, but it's gonna cost money. I don't like that. Or if you have co contacts, like for example, if you have followers, if you have uh, extra pallet that you want to sell instead of selling to auction, put it in Facebook Marketplace. Hey, uh, I have a pallet full of, I don't know, shelves. I'm selling them for 300 bucks. Anybody wants them, just come and pick them up. That's another thing you can do. So with pallets, you need to have volume of pallets, sourcing, testing, and the sales channels has to be there for you to capitalize on that. Otherwise, it's, it's not going to be enough money uh, to do now, when I say not enough money, because I'm not a big guy who likes enough money, big money, blah blah blah, without the figure numbers. I believe if you want to make ten thousand higher a month, uh, a profit in your pocket, you need to have volume. Otherwise, if you want to do a thousand, two thousand, I think with few ballots, get them, source them, and ship them, you'd be good to go. But you need to have uh, a good uh, business uh, uh, business structure to be able to sell pallets very efficiently. Because if you depend on Amazon only and eBay. Uh, it might not be enough for you to uh, have enough um, uh, money to be able to rotate cash flow and also to be the value of the square footage that you have in your in your uh, warehouse. It needs to be a lot of value there. Uh, oh, hold on a second. Uh, Ricardo. Not all. Okay, this is good. Uh, good morning, Batal. How you doing? Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you, my man. Uh, I know it's the last minute and you guys still show it up. I appreciate it. Then it says, do you have the lead list? Uh, Denny, I don't have the lead list. I'm partnering up with other company called OA Cookies. Uh, and actually, they do a lot of lead lists. I'm actually trying to partner up with them and I'm checking all their uh, leads to make sure it's the correct one. And I'm trying to partner up with them and see if we can... Um, bring something to you. It's a very good lead. I'm going to leave the link below. And if you want to check them out, go ahead and check them out. Uh, it's really good leads. Um, you'll be able to get 10 to 15 leads a day for five days, Monday to Friday. And you'll be able to buy whatever you want from them. Now, just make sure when you get any leads, whether it's the one I'm partnering up with, whether with um, any other companies, 
you need to understand you're not going to be able to sell everything in there because all depends on the age of your account and how much you, uh, how much brands and categories you're ungated in, which is really important. But if you want to get ungated into, for example, toys, it's very easy. Entertainment Earth, you can be able to get ungated and specialize in that. Like, for example, me, I specialize in toys only. That's all that I do, toys and video games. That's it. I look like a creeper. I have a lot of stuff around me. But it is what it is, you know? I'm trying to live my childhood, I guess. Hey, Carl says, hey, made it glad I made it here in time. Thank you so much, Carl. I appreciate you, man. You've been awesome. Uh, I hope the business treating you very well through Q4, especially that's the time of the year for you. So I hope it's doing very well, and I'm very happy to have you here. Ricardo says, still learning from the videos from the private label. I get a few potentials, but I am still learning how to use a form your formula. Look, Ricardo, we have a live Q&As um, for the course itself, for private label. Uh, Amazon FBA Giants crash course, if you guys are interested in, go ahead and check it out. We're actually going to change the formula of how we're going to sell that uh, that course, which is going to be coming soon. I'm thinking about that, uh, but I've been really busy, and it's not a reason, but I'll get to it. We have a live, live Q&A with you guys uh, for a private label. So if you want to bring your product and you want me to go through it, you want me to validate it for you, you want me to go through the numbers with you, I don't mind. We gonna, That's why we have our session and we meet up every week to go through your own problems. Not through my problems, not through someone else. It's your problem and whoever bought purchased the course. That's what's my commitment. I can validate the product for you. I can go through the numbers. We can discuss it. I can tell you what's good and bad. And we take it from there. So, Ricardo, if you can make it this week, I believe it's going to be Tuesday, but I'll make a post in our private label, uh, private uh, group, and you'll be able to join, and I will be able to share it with you and see if it's good or not. Especially now when you find product during Q4, you need to be very careful and look at the historical data from last year or even the year before, especially now with pandemic, the numbers are not going to be the same. So, March... The pandemic happened. The sales once spiked up really good for a few months and then went back down a bit, but didn't go very plummeted. It's actually steady and is more than last year as a regular time. So you need to check it with 2019 as well. And if it's anything before March, you should be fine because I believe anything from March, 29, uh, March 2020 and up, the numbers are just a little bit too much. Anything before that is going to be more accurate data. Okay, now, if I say anything before March, before the lockdowns, let's say the pandemic, before the pandemic, and let's say this product sells 1,000 units a month, I believe next year is going to sell 1,500. It's going to sell a little bit more. Why? Not because the pandemic, because what the pandemic caused. It caused people to get to know uh, e-commerce. They get to know, feel comfortable with e-commerce. A lot of them, they've been buying only stuff from uh, Amazon or whatever e-commerce is. So e-commerce is already get a step ahead and getting more growth than any other uh, years. So you will get a little bit of spike in, in sales, which is, I believe is gonna happen 20, 30% more, even 50% could be depending on the product and what type it is. Um, so you need to make sure that you read the historical data, which is really, really important. Uh, and I think it's going to be more than the regular months before the pandemic because of the increase of how many Prime members came in and how people feel comfortable with Amazon because a lot of people were forced to learn uh, how to buy things from online because they had no other choice. So that's what I think. So let's go ahead and let's do the, our uh, in our private group when we come in. Please show, show up um, um, and let's go through your product. And also, Denny, uh, the same thing. Uh, we always have one hour with you guys. Come in and let's go through your product. That's why we paid what you paid for the course uh, to make sure I give you the, the training, which is I believe was amazing. And also at the same time, I'll be able to give you uh, help as a personal level since we are still small and we're staying small. Since we are small and we're talking about being small, please hit the like button and the notification bell and subscribe if you like that content. Uh, because helps us with Amazon, uh, with Amazon algorithm, with YouTube algorithm. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, Denny says, I like, I like the live Q&A. That's awesome. Thank you for your feedback. I found a great season of product RA and sold everything in three days. I closed the listing, but Amazon keeps asking to send more. I won't be able to find more. When can I delete it? Look, I delete after one month. Uh, after the, the return period finishes, I go ahead and delete the listing because if there's no returns. 
for you, you need to wait until, I mean, all of us, you need to wait until January 30th, 30th, I believe, or 31st, because they extended the return period, uh, the returns uh, date for, um, the returns date for um, uh, the Q4 period. So anybody who buys stuff, they don't like it for Christmas, they'll be able to extend that return, return date to uh, the end of uh, January. So that's great, you can delete it then. Uh, but also, if Amazon asks you to send things, it doesn't mean anything. So I don't care about it. I leave it. The reason why I delete my listing, because I don't want someone to find that I was selling a product that I was ungated in, and all of a sudden, it becomes a safety issue with it, and then they track people who sold it, and they see I have a listing active, and they come after me, and all this stuff. That's why I don't I delete them. And also, it's easier for me for my repricer. It's much better because the plan that I have, that has a thousand SKUs. So every time I delete one, I'll keep my uh, my uh, thousand listings and I don't pay more. Uh, and that's it. So, and also cleaner, cleaner dashboard. I don't want to see all the all the things that are inactive and they're not selling. I want to see only the things that are active. So yeah, that's what you do. Um, wash hands. Osman only say wash hands. Yeah, wash hands, I believe. Uh, you can uh, you can talk analyze about Amazon news. It would be very useful. Thank you. That's really good feedback. What do you think of selling on Walmart? Good or not? Yes, Walmart. I think this is my 2021 uh, commitment. I'm actually going to. Um, I'm thinking a lot about 2021 and what are my goals and what I'm going to be doing. Uh, hopefully, when I'm done, I'll be able to share it with you guys. If I finish it on time, I've been a little bit slacking off. I think. Um, all this Q4 was go, 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 and I'm getting tired a bit. Um, so I need to a little bit maybe take rest, but I need to get to my, I need to get to my business plan or my uh, goals for 2021. Uh, Walmart is one of them. Walmart, I think is going to be really great if you get into it right now and you'll be able to open up company, you'll be able to enroll in that program and get yourself in it slowly. I think you're going to be upper hand now. You're going to have an advantage of anybody else who's coming into it. Now, Walmart, uh, again, a lot of attraction, especially for pandemic uh, and the things that happened really helped helped Walmart to grow and let people really recognize Walmart. And I think Walmart is going to um, do well, not going to do as well as Amazon. I think Amazon is just a beast by itself. Is Amazon is already up there. Uh, it's very hard for Walmart to come back, but are they going to be able to beat eBay? Because eBay is 16% of e-commerce. Yes, I believe they can. Uh, and the other thing Walmart has, I think if they treat the sellers very well, they're going to have a huge, a huge advantage over Amazon. Because the only thing about Amazon that bothers me the most is their customer service for sellers. So the seller service, Seller Central, the seller service or the seller customer service is garbage. They're very confused. They always um, have some stupid uh, rules that doesn't make sense. All the uh, reps who are speaking to are actually, they don't have the knowledge to be able to help you. Everything, we're going to escalate it. We're going to escalate it. We're going to escalate it for no reason. Uh, I actually have my supplement uh, got shut down. Uh, tell me because you're not... <laughs> you're you're gated in that specific uh, subcategory. Like what? I've been selling for two years. What are you talking about? And you have to go back and forth. They shut my PPC multiple times uh, the past few months, uh, and it's just a really really headache to get to uh, to get to a resolution. Unless you hire a lawyer, which is gonna basically f the hell out of you. Uh, he's going to steal everything from you. He's gonna charge you three thousand, two thousand. Four thousand dollars to be able to get you get your problem resolved, which is something very easy to be resolved. But you need to go through a lawyer, which is I think is corrupt system. Uh, but Amazon needs to stop their games with uh, how they treat sellers. And a lot of sellers that I speak to, they're actually fed up with Amazon because of how they treat them. They treat them like shit, and they think uh, it's through Amazon giving you a good platform, giving you a lot of traffic. And don't get me wrong, I'm not bashing Amazon. I mean, I make my money with Amazon. I'm happy with them. But that's the thing that really bothers me bothered me the most. Their customer service, how they treat sellers. And secondly, they sell on the same platform, which is something I'm not a big fan of. But who am I? I'm just, a, I was going to say a little guy, um, the big guy in the little screen. Uh, but 
It is what it is. Uh, I think you should get into Walmart, and that's one of the things I'm going to do for 2021. I'm going to expand to Walmart, which is I supposed to do that a few months ago, but I didn't. Uh, running out of stocks, uh, getting busy with the retail and arbitrage, and a lot of things, but I will get to it. So I think you should do it. That's my opinion. Uh, for arbitrage, if I delete the inactive ASIN that has feedback attached to it, will I lose the feedback? No, the feedback it's by itself has nothing to do with it. Once you get it, you get it. It's basically the rating you as a seller, how good you are, how good your product uh, is. And it uh, doesn't matter if you, if you delete the listing, it's not going to affect your seller feedback. And if it gets a review, it's going to get reviewed to the listing, which is you don't give a crap about anyways. So, yeah, it wouldn't be removed. What about the stuff that you put in Amazon? Do you list list them as used i'm using it because of the receipts what about the stuff that you put in amazon do you list it as used i'm saying it because of the receipts uh look um no if they are brand new i will list them as new regular you're allowed to sell products from pallets you're allowed to sell product that you purchase from any other place and put them uh now the only thing uh the issue you if you had if you were selling a product and all of a sudden say, hey, you're gated, you cannot sell anymore. The only the only thing is going to happen, you have to remove that that product and sell them on another platform or try to get ungated with them if it's possible. So if it's uh, toys and games, easy, go ahead and get it. You'd be done um, and you'd be good to go. Uh, so do not list it because of receipts. Receipts only helps you for authenticity and nothing more. Like it's not going to get you ungated in anything. So for me... It should be fine, normal. If it's a product is used, put it as used condition. Uh, if it's new, put it as a new. That's it. It's normal. Uh, and you, you shouldn't have uh, trouble. Now, I will give you an advice from me. I think if you really wanted to do in the U.S. and you have a private label business already running in the U.S. account, I think you should separate them. Have another account, which is Amazon now allow you to have a second account. It's not like before, it's very hard. You need to have VPN, you need to have blah, blah, blah. No, just call them. Hey, I'd like to get a new account because uh, I have different business model, two different things, and I want to separate my accounting. I want to separate my uh, products and my brands. And you'll be able to get one and have one for retail and arbitrage, a flipping product, pallets, wholesale, and one for your private label. Uh, this is the way you do it. Like, for example, me, I have a unified account. So in Canada, I do only um, retail online arbitrage, any shenanigans, pallets, and all this stuff. And on my US, I do only private label. I don't do anything else except private label. Uh, take take care. Take you, Sad. Thank you, Sad. Uh, thank you, Ricardo. I appreciate you for being here. If there's more information, please let me know what you need. I'll be able to help. Uh, can you start uh, a paid group, RAOA pallets? Uh, Maybe, maybe I can. If I see people who are really interested, I'll be able to do all that. I'll be able to do uh, retail and arbitrage, pallets, wholesale. I have a lot of knowledge about it. I have experienced it. I have done it. Um, and I'll be able to help for sure on that. So let's see. If people want more about that, please let me know in the comment that if you want to pay it. I'm talking about a really simple thing. Like I'm thinking about teaching you. I'm just thinking, okay? It's going to be like around $50 a, a month. You get access to Facebook group, which is going to be, uh, I'll be able to coach you on retail, online arbitrage, pallet, wholesale, share with you a lot of knowledge that is going to help you. And also, every time you have an issue, you just basically, you're going to have a live Q&A or live webinars that you'll be able to uh, use. And you'll be able to ask me questions. I'll be able to help you. And I think by now, I proved it to you guys. I do the business. I have scaled it. I know how to scale it. I know how... Uh, my products are. I know my private label. I know my uh, online retail arbitrage. I've shared that with you. If you go back to my videos, you will see all my stuff for private label. You see now my retail online arbitrage. Uh, I do what I do it because I love what I do, and I'm not here to scam you. And I don't expect. I don't think I made <laughs> made millions with YouTube. Um, if you see, if you see how much I made with YouTube, you'd be laughing. Um, I think YouTube now. I've been almost a year and a half. Um, I think I didn't get paid yet, but what's in my, what's in my AdSense account is I believe a hundred dollar. Okay. So I do this because of the experiences that I had before with other gurus who are really scammed a lot of people. 
and I'm trying one person, I'm trying just to give you the right information, showed you it's not as easy as everyone claims to uh, claim it to be, it requires work, but if you do the work, you're gonna be able to make the money. It's simple, hands down. Hands down, you'll be able to do it. And this is how I start. Retail online arbitrage, moved to private label, I made the money. So private label takes time. And I, I, I'm i very clear with my students. Hey, uh, yes, I launched, two, I launched three products, but they're all in negative now. It's going to be negative for the next two, three months. And I understand that. Uh, so if you're not into it yet, start with something small and slowly, slowly move up, move up, move up, move up, move up until you get to where you want it to be. But uh, I said, thank you for that. Um, it might be a good idea. Because uh, to be honest with you, it needs to be, it's a business at the end of the day for me, this one. So if it's, I'm able to make it happen and I make a little bit of money out of it, I'm not talking millions or hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. I'm talking about a few thousands uh, a month. I'm okay with that to be able to share it, to give give you some of my time and to be able to help you to, uh, to get better. So yes, uh, if that's, maybe I'll do it. I'll see what happens. But thank you so much. That's a really good idea. I might consider it and think about it. But if people really want it, uh, I'll be able to do it. Uh, Dennis says, do you know any good accountant who experienced an FBA in the US? No, I don't. I don't know any FBA uh, accountant. Honestly, for accounting, it's very easy now. I think it's the best thing you do is seller board. Like, see seller board I showed you? Uh, I think it's a very good thing. You just have a regular accountant. Uh, I think now most of the accountant, not most of the accountant, most of them, they're able to learn about um, e-commerce and how it works. It's the same kind of system in and out. It's basically your expenses, what are they? And uh, what's, your, sorry, what's your expenses and what's your income? And you'll be able to do it. So you subtract them and that's what you get. And then you'll be able to pay taxes on that. But for sure, it's going to be changed. Um, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Uh, but yeah, uh, you need to get one. Um, Carl, is the return rate high before Christmas as well, or usually after Christmas? Usually after Christmas. Uh, like now, let me tell you. Um, okay, <clears throat> I sold retail online arbitrage. I'm looking at my seller board. Last month in November, I sold 1,611 units and I got returns on 52. So if we put that into perspective, or if we do it 52 divided by 1611 times 100. So I have 3% return rate. So a 3% return rate, which is usually 1 to 3% is good. Uh, but I know uh, why I got a little bit higher return rate than usual. Uh, there's few products that actually I shipped FBM and get broken in transit and I have to refund the people and give them the product. Uh, so I'm a little bit higher on that. Uh, now, January is going to be the return days. I mean, I'm expecting a lot of returns in January. Uh, you're going to get maybe 5, 7, 8%. Depends uh, what you sell. Uh, if you have a, something that sells compostable, I mean, uh, something that uh, consumable, like the one that you do, Carl, I don't think you're gonna get a lot of returns, uh, but toys I'm expecting, I'm going to get returns. Uh, some of them are gonna hurt, but overall, if you have a good profit, who cares? You can absorb this kind of returns. It's normal, it's going to happen. You need to be praised for it. And returns are going to happen in January. Praise for it, praise for it. Uh, but yes, it's gonna happen. But for you, I don't think as much because knowing your product. I'm saying about the RA and OA lead list like those you shared last month. Uh, yes, the lead list. Yes, the lead list. Uh, I mean, this lead list, uh, the one that I shared with you was mine. I had some few people who are actually, um, I have my own VA who source, who actually source products for me right now. Not source, sorry, a fine product for me because I'm really busy myself. I don't know if I'm busy. Or I'm just saying I'm busy. Honestly, I don't know anymore. I didn't even know what Saturday today. That's why I'm late. Uh, but yes, that's one of the things that I'm going to do. Um, uh, Yes, this OA cookies lead list, I think you should join them if you really want to do it. Uh, but I'll give you more information. I'm going to leave the link below. You can go ahead and do them. I'm partnering up, partner, partnering up with them, and I'll see what happens. Uh, but they look so good deals so far, and they're really, really good. Um, 
and maybe you can get a trial. There is a free, I know they have a free Facebook group that you can get into and you can get free leads for one week or two weeks. And if you like them, continue. If you don't like them, then out. If you really want to just leave a comment below and I will, uh, I will give you the link and you'll be able to go ahead and see what happens. Uh, I like the guys. They're very nice. They reached out to me. I used to work with them in the past and uh, they have good stuff, good leads. And I check them all the time and see, make sure everything's good and if they're good or not. I won't recommend something to you that's not good. Uh, unless if it's not good, I'm going to tell you it's not good. If it's good, it's good. Uh, and I told you what you need to anticipate when you get those lead lists. There's no lead list going to help you if your account is catered for most of the products. So that's other things. So if you're lucky to get 30% of those leads to sell, you're good. 30, 50%, there's... Like for, for me, I'm 70, 80%. I can sell the stuff that they're in the leads. But for you, maybe it'd be 30%. Yes, yeah, start 30%. Salsa is going to grow. And just think about it. If you have 10, 10 products a day, uh, if you sell only three of them, you have five days at 15 units a day. 15 units a day times four, that means you may have 60 units. Get two units each, that means 120 units. That's perfect. And you'll be able to build your inventory slowly with that. Let's see. Um... Carl says, do you have any tools to analyze Walmart market like H10, Jungle Scout? No, I don't have. I don't have anything. My plan is, well, Walmart is whatever products I have in Amazon, these are the ones I'm going to transfer to Walmart as well. I'm going to sell as well in Walmart. So whatever works in Walmart uh, in Amazon is going to work in Walmart the same way. So Jungle Scout, Helium 10, Solid dot tools, which is the one that I'm really excited about right now, and hopefully I'm going to do a tutorial about solid dot tools because I really love uh, I love the tool. I reached out to them and I told them I really like your tool a lot. They have a lot of things that they do that similar to my own ideas, to my own beliefs. So I would like to I would like to reach out. Uh, I would like to do some uh, some kind of um, tutorial on them because I really think it's going to help you tremendously. Anybody who's selling. On Amazon, they need that tool to have exponential growth. It's really, really cool. So, but I think I spoke to the guy, uh, to the CEO, and um, you know, we're working on something hopefully together for the new year and see what happens. It's really, really, I love it. I lost trust in Helium 10. I lost trust in Helium 10. I told you that even this guy here who actually did a full Helium 10 tutorial, and I'm actually, it's just big name, get a good hype. And I'm done with it. I'm, 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 I stopped using them. That's it. I don't like what they do or what they stand for. Hey, I'm just maybe a bitter old man. But uh, if someone go ahead and bring someone on their podcast that they're really legit scammers and they still try to promote those people, you can tell you what kind of business they have. And I cannot stand for that. Walmart requires LLC to open an account. Yes, they require LLC to open an account, I believe. I, at least I know for me because I tried to get into it and I sh shared with them everything and they still didn't accept it uh, because we're missing a few papers, I believe. I'm not sure, but Megan, she's the one who's taking care of it to open an account. But this is one of the priorities I'm going to do. First of all, I have priorities to finish some of the products that I have right now, which is I need a lot of uh, optimize, optimization and images, enhanced brand content, especially for the new brand which is I believe by next year I'm going to kill it with it. Um, and that's my idea. See, next year I'm going to kill it. <laughs> Hopefully I'm going to build it for the next six, seven, eight months. Build it very well. And it's going to be really awesome. Uh, but yeah, I believe you need to uh, LLC. They need legit sellers. And if you tell them you sell on Amazon, that's give you another plus because they want trained sellers like you have knowledge about it. Uh, Danny, for Walmart, do we need inventory to Walmart or do we store them in our garage like we do on FBM? So far, you need to uh, store them by yourself, I believe. Uh, but I think uh, Amazon, uh, Walmart is doing, is going to come up with uh, fulfillment centers soon. Uh, when? I don't know, but they're going to come up with it. But for now, people are doing is basically they're fulfilling their orders from Amazon. So when the order comes in, they do merchant fulfill or they do... Um, they do uh, um, multi-channel fulfillment order from, from Amazon to the customer, and they'd be good to go. So they use Amazon as a freight forwarder or as a shipping company, and that's it. And as also as a storage unit. But if you do it, I believe you should have a 3PL, which is going to help you as well. Have units some there. 
and you'll be able to ship any orders that comes from Walmart. Uh, can I ask you, can I ask what's your long-term plan with Amazon business like five years? Build one month, one uh, million a month business and sell it or what? Look, one million, this is easy to make. One million revenue in Amazon is very easy. Uh, I think uh, if with three products, I believe you can reach a million. Like for example, the, the supplement brand itself, I have, now I have three products within that supplement and two of them are ran out of stock because I'm very good at stocking out and my supplier crappy. And also us, we made a mistake too. So it's not everything is them. Uh, it's a million dollar, but it doesn't mean much. A million dollar, a million dollar revenue, uh, revenue. You go ahead and supplement. If you're lucky, if you get 15 to 20%, that's $150,000 a year. Now, my plan with the supplement if I can sell this good, because now it's trending down, it's not going up anymore. Uh, I think a lot of competition, a lot of prices going up, so I'm not able to spike up. I'm still going steady and go a little bit down, steady, a little down. So it's going downward a bit. So that's why, uh, because 2020 wasn't that great for me. I have my my good brand, which is was in party and gathering and everything crashed. So I had to start uh, in toys and games, which is, you guys saw this is going to be great. I think I'm going to reach a million very, 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 very as soon as I get units and I get enough. I think we're going to get a million in no time. Uh, my plan is with the new toys and games, I'm going to build it for one year. I'm going to sell it. That's all what I do. I think, and I made a big mistake, and I'm telling you my mistakes, and I hope you don't do it, Carl. With the supplement, I should have sold it when I told you guys about it. Remember six months, eight months ago? I told her, hey, I get a, I get, I went to Empire Flippers and they were offered me ninety thousand dollars for that business and had only one product in it and they were able to offer me that much. Um, I wish I sold it then, uh, but now I think it's too late. The product is fluctuating; is not an upward trend. It's going steady, a little bit down, a little bit up, a little down. So there is struggle going on with it because competition more in. There is more stuff happens. Um, so I wish I sold it then. With this toys and games, I'm not going to be stupid like last time and keep it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is basically I am going to build it and I'm going to sell it. As soon as I see it upward, as soon as I add three products to it, which is I have three products right now with this brand, which is a lot of money. Uh, I actually, three brands, I'm selling three times what I'm expecting. So I couldn't launch them three of them. I'm going to launch two of them reordered for two of them the third one i'm gonna launch it later on in in uh march okay but i tested i know it's working so it's gonna be three products by the end of uh, by mid of next year and as soon as you see the numbers goes up i'm going to sell it i'm going to sell as soon as it goes up sell it get the money and reinvest in a new a new brand and keep doing that over and over and over uh, i think that's what you need to do but not five years i think you need to be one to two years that's it. Five years is too much because every product has a shelf time. And five years, it's, I think, you're going to be in the downward side because every product is going to expire. It's going to expire at some, some time, somehow, uh, unless it's really a regular uh, product that, like the spatula uh, that's been there for a long time or something that you have, you have maybe thousands of reviews on it uh, nobody can catch you you rank for 90 percent and higher of the keywords uh, nobody can compete with you yes you're good to go but if it's not and your reviews are going okay you're not going higher enough and other people are coming in and be able to catch up with you you're maybe in a you, yeah, maybe in trouble, but most of the products are going to have a shelf time that's going to expire and I think most of people don't understand that they say, hey, product's going to be forever. Yes, there's some products going to sell forever, but there's some products that are not going to have a shelf time. So you need to make sure it's good. There's some trends that people, hey, they love if trend becomes very, let's say sushi. Uh, let's say sushi was a trend. Everyone likes to make it at home. There's a sushi roller, sushi, sushi kit, blah, blah, blah. Everyone's doing well. But after that, the sushi was going down trend. Oh, your product's going to go down as well with it. So. Remember those, I don't know what are they, the uh, Russian um, 
uh, flask or those uh, copper um, drinks, people were selling thousands and thousands and thousands and millions of dollars uh, a, a, um, a month. And all of a sudden, it started crashing and going down. Why? Because the trend of that kind of drink went down. So you need to be the same thing as you. If you see what I'm talking about, huh? Because I know your product. I'm trying to give you some, some kind of thing. So you need to see your trend of your product itself. You go to Google Trend. How your product is going? It's going up. It's going down. Now, when I say Google Trend, it's not for validation only. I'm talking about your trend of your product, how it's going up or down. That's the things that you need to pay attention to. But it's awesome. I'm in. Let me know. Thank you, Asif Patel. I appreciate it. I really appreciate your support. And yes, if I do it, I'll let you know. Are you able to FBM from Canada to US? Um, yes, but not through Amazon uh, Amazon system. So I'm not able to do it through Amazon themselves um, because they don't ship from Canada to the US. The things that you can do is there's local private companies in Canada that were able to ship any orders that you have in Canada to the US. So for example, if I'm going to do eBay and I'm going to experiment with that a lot, if I make a sale, I'm going to tell this company to ship it for me. They have daily uh, shipments or daily trucks that cross the border and be able to use USPS as a shipping and they will charge you extra. So for example, if they have priority mail, let's say they buy this priority mail, it's 10 bucks uh, to ship anything that fits in that priority mail box. They will charge you $1, $2 just for that service. And they will do that every month. And you'll be good to go. So from Canada, US, yes, you can do that. And also something that I learned from Abdul Rahman, which is one of our uh, subscribers, one of our um, uh, people in our Facebook group. He actually does from Canada to the US. And what he does, he actually goes to UPS, UPS, which is uh, by the border. And he drops the things in. And people from the US, they pick up the stuff from the border and bring them to fulfillment centers. He does that. And that's working very well for him. And those things that actually I didn't know about. That actually, I go to UPS, buy the border, which is from Canada in the US. He drops all his units. And I'm, and a UPS driver from the US picks up the stuff and send them to F, uh, send them to a fulfillment center, which is really, really a good idea as well. If you're shipping a lot of units to Amazon fulfillment center in the US, okay, uh, which is really great. I can do FBM with Deliver. They accept everyone. Again, one bad thing is that they do not accept returns. I'm not sure how hard it is uh, to will make things for me. Look, uh, just look at the return rate and see how, how good or how bad it is. If it's a lot of returns, uh, maybe you just hire another 3PL who handle returns for you. Uh, but if, don't forget, Deliver are only good to ship. And um, from what you're telling me, if they don't accept return, it's going to make your life a little bit harder. I'd rather take one, one fulfillment center or 3PL who does everything. It's easier for you because they'll be able to get the product, check it, the return. If it's good, they repackage, send it back in. And I also, with my 3PL, I send them extra packaging. So, for example, if I have a product and I have a packaging, uh, let's say I send 1,000 units. I send 1,000 units and I send 100 packaging. Empty packaging, flat packaging, flat to my 3PL. So when he gets returns and the box is damaged, he can repackage it for me and send it back in for me, which is really a great thing to do as well. Okay, so think about that. I think you should have someone who's one shop stop, one stop shop, whatever it is, is much better than uh, someone who does only one thing. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> very, very, very nice. I don't know. Disgusting in the middle of that webinar. Just sneeze and crap. Uh, Megan says, okay, 3PL will do it for, for Walmart. Yes, many, many, many like it. Uh, uh, down South Prep, they do that. Unicargo do that. A lot of 3PLs, they do that. Fulfillment for Walmart. Uh, there's one that was called ShipBob, which is used in the past. And ShipBob, uh, I'm not recommending. The other ones also are very good. Uh, ShipBob is basically, they will... Uh, do the same thing. You get the order. You, sh uh, you should be proxy to them. If you get an order, they fulfill it. Whether it's eBay, whether it's Walmart, whether uh, you're on Shopify, Shopify, and all this stuff. Nice. The sun just decided to come out. Very nice. Very nice. So yeah, extra light on my face. Um, 
yeah, so that's what it is. Good stuff. Uh, thanks, man. A trend of the product is a good reminder. Yes, check it out. Uh, with, with your product, has been there for a long time, especially knowing uh, the product, Carl. Um, but just check it out. But I think one to two years, it should be fine. If you get the good sales and you're profitable all the time and up upward, there's a lot of private uh, private companies that love to buy brands and they will they will increase the sales. They will add more products. They have the cash and they build it better and they resell it. There's actually, there's a business model. People, they do. Um, they buy a business who already kind of good, makes, let's say, a 1,000, but they don't want to do all the legwork. So, for example, you went, source the product, get the product, and you try to rank it a bit. You made a little bit of profit, 500, 1,000. They would love to get that. They get it. Then they do the marketing. They spend more money in PPC. They do the giveaways. They... They establish it, they increase the sales, and then they sell the business right away. Because they say, hey, I bought the business, already has one year, but the only they make 1000 or 1500 or $500 a month. I buy it, I make it to $3,000, $5,000 a month, and then resell it again for way more money. So that's other things. That's why, uh, actually, one of the things I wanted to do it was like real estate, but with Amazon accounts. Get them. People who are struggling with their Amazon account, they want to leave the business, they're making 500 bucks, I can get it. I know I have the skills to be able to increase it. And I think anybody who's in our course has the skills to do it. And they'll be able to improve on that business, make it more returns, wait three to six months, make the money, and they'll sell back the business. Uh, it's really, really make a lot of money. And that's where the most of the money. That's when I see people who are build a business, who have the knowledge, and they still keep their business. It's a stupid move. Sell it, sell it, sell it. As soon as you make it profitable, make it good, make a lot of money, sell for a million dollars, get the money, invest 20, uh, 200000 of that, pocket the eight hundred, and redo that over and over and over. It's really, really, really good thing to do. Look, I wish I didn't do the mistakes I did in the past. In the past, I worried about other people's businesses, how to build their own business. I was so hard in coaching. I was coaching people. I was showing them how to build their business, and I lacked my own business. I... I didn't care about my business as much because like, hey, I'm doing the coaching. I'm doing this. I'm increasing that. I'm helping people, blah, blah, blah. And my business was getting affected. And I didn't care about my brands as much. Some of them went down. Some of them didn't do well. And I just did very bad thing. It was a good learning experience. I learned a lot from it. Hey, do not uh, worry about your business first and make sure that you get your business to where it needs to be first before you worry about other people's businesses. Because at the end of the day, we're with snap of finger, I was, I didn't have anything. I lost a lot. I lost partnership. I lost businesses. And now I'm stronger than ever. I, I build my business back up. I know where my priorities are and the mistakes that I hope you guys don't do. So I hope that was good. Uh, um, I sit uh, doing the pr uh, product she want. Yeah, I think she's doing it. Uh, she's doing samples. Um, no, I don't think the car rooftop is still available. The guy changed his mind on it. He doesn't want to sell it. I think he wants to redo it or something. Uh, but no, it's not there. I, th I think you can find a lot of better products. Uh, I sit a lot of good products. If you guys look, you guys are on my course. Uh, so next week, uh, Tuesday, I believe we have it. Or I don't know when at the time we're having our live Q&A. Let me know what's your struggle. Let's solve it together. That's why you guys paid for it. And that's why we're having the weekly webinar to be able to help you. I think there's a lot of opportunities out there and you'll be able to do very well with them. So let me know, guys, what you need there and let's do it. I said, said uh, okay, we did that. Uh, have you ever done any sponsor on eBay? Yes, you can do DNA uh, sponsor. I have done it in the past. Um, it sells okay, but that's it. If you see all eBay people, uh, eBay sellers, I'm not very, I'm not talking all of them. Most of them are, they have this, I don't spend money on advertising, stealing my money, eBay is doing this, eBay doing that. So what they do instead, they just have a huge amount of inventory and they sell organically. Uh, I think advertising is good, uh, but I'm not the man to speak about eBay. I'm not the eBay guy. I experimented with it. I did a few things with it. But I'm not the guy to talk about. I'm more Amazon guy. I know a lot about it. And eBay is, you know, it's more volume. I think all a lot of big sellers just worry about the inventory more than anything. Would you kindly share the mistakes you made so we can avoid? 
Okay, uh, I, will, I will mention a few of them. Uh, partnership. Uh, partnerships is very, very difficult thing. I searched it. I uh, tried to find out who are the best partners, how you choose the best partnership. Um, I did some partnership that uh, some of them were scammers. So I left that. Uh, there's some of them are actually, we weren't on the same page because what happened, I thought this way. I thought this way. If I have the knowledge and they have only the money, I'll be able to do it and be easier. And that's it. They have strength. Uh, I have my strength and be able to build something together. But actually the issue that rises from that is actually when they have the money, but they don't have the knowledge makes your life is very difficult because they don't know the process. They don't know, hey, and ranking is going to cost you a lot of money. They, they're they not going to pay attention to, hey, how the listing is going to be written, how things are going to get into your business that really requires knowledge and requires money. So if you're taking money from them to build a business and they're not anticipating what's going on, it's a bad partnership. That's one of the partnerships that actually didn't do well for me. Uh, and I stopped doing any partnership now because I realized partnership doesn't work unless you you cannot force partnership. For partnership has to be born or something that has to be created through through uh, uh, a lot of um, negotiation, a lot of um, um, friendship building, uh, building friendship, building relationship uh, on daily basis. Until you see you guys are really compatible. So that didn't do well with me. I think my most mistakes were partnerships or getting myself into businesses that I had no idea or something in you because you get this shiny object that you want to do and you start focusing on your goal. And that's really hurt you. The only time I start making the most money, and I thought I was making money before, is actually when I focus on only my business. Hey, my do my private label. I'm going to make it good. This is my retail arbitrage. I'm going to do well. And I start making the money instead of focusing on other things. Um, the other mistakes, which is I share with you a lot, choosing a products. I made a lot of mistakes with choosing products. And this stuff are uh, the mistakes with choosing products was a lot of hype. Don't forget, in 2015 and 16, there was a lot of, look, Private label doesn't do well right now as a content creator, and I'm not doing well with creating content because there's a lot of people who taught it the wrong way and really messed up the, the information, messed up the idea about Amazon FBA. So now if you come up and say anything, it's just basically you're a scammer. You're not a good guy. You're trying to scam the business. I'm trying to cheat you to get your money. I'm not here to make you get your money. If you see I'm not pushing my stuff hard at all if you see our course we only have 10 people why i don't push it you don't see me here sell 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 you ask me a question i'm gonna answer you exactly what i shared in my course i have no problems with that but if you want more come join our course that's what i do so what happened at that time is actually when was a lot of people who are just talking about amazon and they don't know what they don't do the business and you believe them because you thought they're good speakers they know what they're doing i'm not talking about only one person most of them or you know who you know who they are guys i mean they're big channels they have 80,000 100,000 200 1 million uh, subscribers you understand it is actually i fell for it i fell for it i fell for many of them and I thought this is the way. So I was just choosing products and they tell me, yes, it's good, it's good. And then all bad. And um, yeah, these are mistakes I did. Partnership um, was a big, the biggest one for me. The biggest one. Um, looking at shiny objects, for sure, 100%. I get into a lot of stuff that, hey, man, I think you need to specialize, be niche down, and that's the way you need to do it. Uh, and do your own thing. Don't. And also other thing, which is very important. I always try to compare myself for someone who's ahead of me by a lot. So, for example, if I see someone who's making a million and I was making, let's say I'm still at 10,000 a month, I was comparing myself to what this person is doing. No. If I'm doing 10,000, I'm going to compare myself who's doing 30,000 and replicate that until I get to 30. Then if I get to 30, I'm going to look at someone who's doing, making 50 and replicate what he's doing and slowly, slowly be able to do it because... After you reach a million dollar in sales, 
which is easy to do. So if anybody says million dollar seller, oh my God, mm, finger, okay? It means nothing a million dollar, okay? Uh, you need to make sure you uh, focus, 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 focus on your goal. Focus on your goal, focus on your business, and you'll be good to go, man. I even th forgot my uh, my train of thoughts, or if I call the trains if anyway. Uh, let me see here. Um, uh, Carl says, I say this for everyone who's not in SADS course yet. SADS really teaches you how to do how to sell a business. I feel so secure while selling now versus selling before. I have 23K per month, by the way, thanks to SADS. Thank you so much, Carl. I appreciate it, man. This is the stuff that really motivate me. These are the stuff that makes me fired up. Carl, you worked hard. You actually listened to everything I have to say. You actually applied it and and you saw the growth, which is I'm very happy. You actually even used our own service for listing optimization, used used a lot of things that we offer, and I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me, uh, and I'm very happy for you, and I think that's not the end of the road because you're very uh, very straight. You very um, you learn. You sp you're like a sponge. You learn. You apply it. You adapt. You pivot. You, you focused, and that's – I wish I had that when I started. I wish I had it. I wish someone told me, hey, focus on your goal, focus on your business. I started started the whole business because I want to build my business. I wanted to focus on my business. Instead, I focus on other people's, and I messed up. So focus on it. Build your own business. If you get into any partnership, do it on the side, but do not affect your own business. Do not get someone else partnered up with your own business that exists. Leave your own business, and then – get someone else for starting a new journey, whatever. Yes, why not? See what happens. But do not depend on it. I depend on that. I depend on this partnership. I thought this is the one. And forget my own basics. So do that. You'll be good. But I really appreciate this kind words. It means a lot to me. And I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are killing it. Um, Q4, make your money. And in January, February, March, strategize. See what you're going to do. How, what you're going to launch, what's in your pipeline, and how you're going to launch. And hopefully I'm going to do a video about how how what's in 2021, how I'm going to prepare for it, what I'm going to be doing, and see if that's going to help you. My thing's going to be different than yours. Yours is going to be different than mine. Maybe you're more ambitious than me. Uh, maybe you uh, have different goals than me. So don't be pressured for what I'm going to share, but I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to share and see what's up. And by the way, a lot of predictions I've done or things that I wanted to do, I failed at them. Okay, so it's not like last year I made a lot of things that I wanted to do. I didn't achieve, I achieved most of them, but not a lot of them. I mean, I achieved most of them, but not all of them. And I'm okay with it. But I'm going to be doing, doing, doing until I see what happens. So, guys, I really appreciate you. I hope you guys, I really like the content so far for uh, the Retail Online Arbitrage course. If you have any more questions, let me know. If you have anything about private label, also let me know. Uh, because I think it's really, really important. And if you like the material, please hit the like button. If you really want to learn the right things about how to sell on Amazon FBA the right way, the honest way, no crap, no, I'm here to get your money. I'm here to help you. If it works, works. If you want to join our course, you go ahead. You want to join our group, you go ahead. But other than this, I'm here just to help you. So, guys, have yourself a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Sorry for being late. And let's make it happen. Focus on your goal and let's make that money. Take care, everybody. I love you all. Take care.